the slides properly. Yes. yes. So yeah. So first of all, thanks uh, Michael and PS for the organization of this tutorial, long marathon. Uh, and not only today, I know it. So congrats on that one first, and thanks for being part of this. So today I had to pick uh, two stories. I picked only these two stories uh, to illustrate how simple is making an impact in the human health today. So I want to talk about simple avatars to study eating disorders and the smile model, this infant body model that also Noreen presented, which is being used for early diagnosis today. Okay, so let's move on with these simple avatars. Okay, so maybe some of you are aware of anorexia nervosa. This is a condition of uh, primary uh, adolescents are affected uh, by it for young uh, women. And what you're seeing here in this video, hope the streaming is not that bad, is uh, an adolescent looking at herself in the mirror and she seems dissatisfied with the body. And then when the camera zoom out, you see that there is a big, big, big gap between how the person body is and how she is perceiving herself. And actually this, uh, as a spoiler, was an established paradigm in anorexia nervosa. So uh, in the Tübingen hospitals uh, around uh, 2018, so there were these experiments that were done, mainly conducted by Simone Molbert at uh, that time, now she married, she's Simone Barons. So what the experiment is, okay, let's challenge this paradigm so what we're going to do is that we are going to ask subjects, anorexia nervosa and healthy controls, to adjust their current body shape and their desired body shape. And then also subjects were scanned to have a GT reference. So what you see on the left is this VR setting where the person is adjusting uh, the shape of a body due to simple, as you have seen with this beta space, you can change the weight or the appearance of the shape of the body. And then what you see on the right with the video is an example of somebody manipulating this body in real time. And they are perceiving this in 3D. And then they are asked to adjust the body to their, what they think is their body and what they would like it to be. Okay. So let me jump to the results. And I will start with the right-hand side where you see the healthy woman. We have the actual body in the middle with a BMI of 22. And then results show that when you ask people to adjust their body, actually we think that we're a bit thinner than we actually are. So people were estimating their body with almost one point less uh, BMI. And when they were asked what would be their desired body, this still goes further uh, until they almost descend two points in BMI, which is, so we would like to be thinner as we are, okay? So let's keep that in mind. And then when addressing the anorexia nervosa subjects, you see that in the middle, they have this actual body with a BMI of 15, which is already under red underweight area. And that actually, when they were asked to estimate their body, they were not that far. So they didn't estimate this person, which was clearly chubbier that we saw in, the, in this mirror uh, video. They estimated the body, which is actually pretty close to their actual body. And furthermore, when they asked them, how do you wanna be, what's your desired body? They are even closer to their actual body. So this literally changed the perception in the medical domain on how people are addressing this anorexia nervosa because now they know that it's not a perception problem. It's an attitude towards how they wanna be. So I think simple here played a pretty uh, important role. So what's next? So then the question is, can this technology be used to improve anorexia nervosa treatment? And there is this VR Expo uh, project uh, ongoing and what they're asking themselves is, does exposure to a simulated body with higher weight induce stress, okay? And they focus on individuals with high weight concerns and anorexia nervosa. And if so, so if this exposure creates stress, can this stress decrease over prolonged and repeated exposure? So in order to perform this uh, experiment setting in a widespread, there were two challenges. It's that patients need to be scanned in order to obtain a first body or to know, measure the, their body. And this has two issues, mobility. So these are inpatients in a hospital. So you need to take them out to a scanner, which usually it's not uh, wearable. And then there is this major item, which is privacy. And here with privacy, I'm not talking about burying a face. So the only person I know who can mask the identity with a pair of glasses is Superman. 
But otherwise, if you blur your face and you send your picture to a friend, they will know it's you. Okay, so here the deal is on not taking a picture. So towards this end, we designed the virtual caliper. So this is a, a tool that we created that is using the HTC5 ones. And what you're seeing here is Anna Thaler, who is measuring herself in 3D with the ones. And this takes less than five minutes. It doesn't require any picture. So here, the challenge was to identify reliable measurements. So we want people to be measured. So the question is not which uh, measurements are the good ones, is which measurements can be performed accurately. So we studied 13 measurements. We took 20 subjects, gender balance, and then we measured the accuracy. So people were measured by themselves and by a trial coordinator in order to assess the accuracy and the repeat repeatability. So each measurement was performed three times. So you have these 78 measurements per participant, and you have an overview of the participants then. And here, uh, what we have is that we have this uh, accuracy and repeatability. So we sorted all these 3D measurements that were performed by the, the subjects in the study. And long story short, I will just so we picked the ones that were the more accurate and the more stable in terms of repeatability, plus the weight, which turned out to be pretty stable and accurate too. And then what we can do is that from these measurements, we can create this avatar. So here in gray, light gray, you see the avatar that is estimated from a scan. And in dark gray, you see the avatar animated. And uh, I won't go into the details of the animation. So in the next talk, uh, Joachim Tesh is going to take more details about how the avatar is animated. And then you can perceive the avatar in 3D and do these experiments on body perception. So we released a bunch of tools. I will show you the address after. So we have this uh, uh, way to create the avatars. You can export them. So this is a real time video where the tools are just being run sequentially. You can take this avatar, export it as an FBX into the Unity engine. So you have already heard of this, this uh, morning or what time is it? And then we are also releasing this uh, HTC Vive application where you can experiment and perform, uh, play with these measurements and perceive your body in 3D on the HTC Vive. So this is the, the virtual caliper. You can check the address if you're interested or email us for more uh, questions. So then what I'm very excited about is that in this VR Expo that I was telling you before, actually they are using the virtual caliper for immersive VR, and they are showing an individualized shape with higher weight to the inpatients. And at the same time, they are addressing the physiological stress response over time. And they are studying if this stress is uh, augmented when they are exposed to a body with higher weight. And here I just give you the, uh, the PI contact, which is Simone Barnes conducting this uh, project. So if you have more questions, she's on, she will be on maternity leave now, so you can email her. Okay, and then I would like to talk about this uh, second uh, story, which is this uh, SMILE model that we created for early diagnosis. So I will start by explaining what is uh, cerebral palsy. So it's a disorder that affects muscle tone, movement, and motor skills. Cerebral palsy usually is caused by brain damage that happens before or during a baby's birth. And then what is interesting is that you have the general movement assessment, which is a non-invasive and cost-effective way to identify neurological issues, which may lead to cerebral palsy. So here, what we are targeting is that early diagnosis. And why? Because this leads to early therapy, which is shown that can be effective and diminish all these effects of cerebral palsy. So if we can do early diagnosis, we should do it with this non-invasive and cost-effective system. So let me explain a bit more what this general movement assessment is. So they, in the hospitals, they put the infants from three weeks to three months on their back like this, and they record videos for two or three minutes. And then here the brain is exploring the motion of the limbs naturally. And then it 
they should perform uh, an exploration of the motor system. And when the brain is damaged, actually this exploration leads to very repetitive or not so uh, elegant or how to say complex movements. Okay, so the goal is to automate this diagnosis, to have these recordings and then have computer vision techniques helping us. And towards that end, we need to track pose, we need to have the ratings of the doctors, and then we could do learning. Okay, so we had these uh, point clouds obtained uh, from the infants. And then what happens if we use a simple body model? Well, so it doesn't work, right? So we needed an infant body model. But then, of course, there are challenges when treating with uh, children, and especially in the, in the hospital context. So they are non-cooperative. They won't strike a depot for you, that's for sure. We had this low quality data, connect the one. We had partial data because we rarely observe the back of the, of the infants. We have these bulky diapers, which are pretty much hiding or changing the morphology of the children. And then we have scars data. This is also due to ethics, the environment. You need to uh, have a, a proper environment to scan the, the infants. So here again, uh, long story short, I won't go too much into the details. We drop basically everything we had at it. So what you see on the left is the setting with the computer and the Kinect on top of it. We recorded the infants. And then we have these point clouds. We segmented them with techniques from ClothCab. We used open pose to have estimates on the poses. And we use an initial body model from Symbol that was manually done uh, to do the registrations. And then from them using the classical, now classical tools that you saw this morning, we registered this data and created this smile model. And now, so when we have a, the image of an infant, this pretty much looks much better. At least. It's still not perfect. I think as Noreen mentioned in the previous talk, there are still small details that could be better, but that's pretty good enough. Okay, so let me just show you a, a result. So on the top left, you have the RGB image of this infant uh, performing this exploration of the motor system. In the middle, you have the 3D point cloud. And on the right, you have the registrations that we obtained with the model. And then in the second row, what we are showing is that now, because symbol has this uh, property of factorizing uh, pose and shape, we can just change the shape of the infant and perform the same pose. And actually we use that to uh, assess that our method is capturing enough information. So GMA rating, this technique that the doctors are using, it's only about motion. So shape should be independent. If they see the three videos, of these three different infants, so to say, the rating should be the same. And actually we performed this experiment and this is the case. So this allows us to say that the, the motion that we are capturing should be good enough to, for, to perform the medical rating. So the next steps in these projects are to deploy more acquisition setups, which is ongoing and uh, with collaborations and to collect enough data to train an automatic uh, diagnosis. So I'm pointing these three publications that we did and the address of the SMILE model that it's openly available for non-commercial purposes for research. Okay. And then the last part I wanted to talk about is uh, what one AI. So I don't know if many of you are aware of uh, this foundation it's a Indian foundation uh, doing uh, artificial intelligence for social good. And they contacted us uh, to use the SMILE model. And they are having this uh, project on maternal, newborn, and child health. So the problem that they are facing, so it's uh, all the information is in the, in the web. I will just do a small summary. Is that the weight at birth is really important. It's an indicator of our overall health. And low weight newborns, less than 2.5 kilos, they face a highest risk of early death, stunted growth, lower IQ, and chronic conditions. And here again, as I mentioned before, the key element is that if you do early diagnosis, then you can really help them and get them what they need and what they deserve. And unfortunately, India has the highest percentage of infants which are not weighted at all or poorly weighted at birth. And I won't go into the details, but this has 
although it may sound strange, uh, this is a, a real issue uh, for many things that we are not going to discuss today. So what one AI is doing is that they are de developing this uh, tool based on Smile, where with a, a smartphone, Android system, doesn't need to be expensive. Um, they are taking the video of the newborns with these rulers. And then from here, they are doing anthropometry. So they are trying to get circumferences, weight, measurement. And uh, one of the advantages that they are having with this app is that it's uh, geolocalized. So you, they know where the infant is and it's timestamped. And this may seem uh, very simple, but actually this is giving them a key information to uh, help these newborns. Okay, so I wanted to cite uh, Dr. Anandan for those of you who don't know, he supervised among others, uh, Michael Black. Uh, so he's saying our smartphone base- uh, Actually, the there were no others. There was just me. I was his only PhD student. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, among others, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, all alone, actually. I have no others. I have no siblings. Okay. That's a hundred percent uh, super score. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry for that. Um, yeah, so our smartphone based anthropometry solution uses cutting edge techniques in AI and computer vision. And what excites us the most is that these solutions will help the most vulnerable members of our society, newborn babies, get the medical care they deserve and uh, need. And uh, here, I think it's something where uh, as a personal contribution, I see that I have a very small chunk in there, but it's really something that I'm very proud to be part of this, as you saw this uh, medical projects going on there. And just, uh, I think that here is also good to acknowledge the work of everybody in the teams, not only of course, the researchers, engineers, and so on, but I had this uh, time where somebody of the administrative department came to us when what one collaboration was a bit of a secret saying, oh, could I talk about this? Because this is really so cool and I'm so excited to be part of it. So I'm sure, yeah. So everybody deserves uh, the credit for that. And uh, yeah. So if you want to still work or also be part of this, uh, we have open positions in the in the team now at uh, Indra. So we landed a few pretty cool grants, especially one also working on infants. Uh, so we have PhD postdocs and research engineers position. If you want to take a screenshot or this is going to be recorded so you can check it out after. And uh, with this, so I just want to thank again the organizers and especially all collaborators in related previous neighbor projects. So I think uh, simple is really uh, making a, making it count in these domains of health. There are others that I, for, for time constraints, I could not add them here, but there are also yeah. other places where it's having a, an impact. So yeah, I think everybody that feels that has contributed to that most probably has contributed to that. So thank you all. Thank you very much, Suji. It's a very cool, uh, inspiring, impactful work. Uh, Michael, I think we're a bit over time. Do we? Uh, yeah, we can move on. Thanks, Suji. I just wanted to point out, Anandan is a, apparently giving a, a, a an invited talk on a, and he's on some discussion panel. Um, 